Uh, back to Fight Island again. We haven't really seen you since your last CJ Dillashaw fight. Obviously, weren't these scheduled opponents, so I'll ask right out of the gate. Were you, how prepared were you when you got this call? Because we had spoken in the past, I think it was before the Aldo Yan fight, and you said you were staying ready just in case that fight didn't happen. So was it the same case for this? You were just ready to step in knowing Aljamain might not make it? Yeah. Um, I have been in gyms with like a lot of really you know big names for a really long time, and I know that that's like a really easy way to get a title shot is just to you know be more prepared than everyone else in the division. So uh, yeah, that was kind of the idea. Also, I know Sterling had mentioned uh, he wanted to fight in November. So when I saw that it was an October date, I knew that you know something was not going well for him. And, uh, and that was also just like another little thing where I was like, eh, like this actually could be like a very real possibility. So, um, so yeah, I, I was staying ready from about, you know, probably like seven weeks, seven weeks before this fight. And, and looking at this matchup, this might be a, little, a weird question, but you obviously did a whole camp preparing for Algermain, and now you're doing a, a camp to prepare for Jan. You kind of know what, Jan doesn't really threaten many takedowns, doesn't threaten much grappling. Is getting ready for Jan easier than preparing for Algermain, considering he, you, we, we haven't really seen a lot of Jan's grappling and stuff? Uh, all of my camps are kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. I wouldn't call any of them easy, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely different. Uh, I think that uh, if there is anywhere where there's definitely going to be a huge advantage for me in this fight, it's definitely going to be in the grappling area. So um, not having to worry about that as much maybe makes it easier. Sure. Um, uh, but no, I get my ass kicked almost every single day in camp, so I wouldn't call it any of them easy. And this, of course, this is for the interim title. And we've seen fighters like Justin Gaethje, he gets the belt, throws it on the ground, doesn't want it. Dustin Poirier, on the other hand, said this, he does view this as the culmination of the process. Which camp are you in? When you get the interim title, will you consider that a world championship? Uh, yeah, I, I think, um, think Aljamain had to retreat. And TJ's village is still on fire from when I set it on fire. So um, if we're talking like ancient war type stuff, which is like how I like to view this game, it's just like fun, funner for me to do it that way. Um, I'm the guy that can take the land. You know, those other, those other two guys can't right now. I'm the guy that can take the land. So I'll, I'll see myself as champ. I, I know that, you know, most of the public sees Jan as the champ anyways. I know that I definitely will have some making up to do. Like I, I definitely still need to make up my two losses against Aljamain and uh, against TJ also. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go home with, like, you know, a smile on my face, calling myself the champ if I win. And then finally, uh, Jan had said on the MMA Hour earlier this week that he plans to take you into deep waters, and that's where he will shine. So I would just like your response to that. Yeah, yeah I mean, he tries to do that with everyone, right? Like, that's, that's really no surprise. So, um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Hey, go ahead. Is one of the upsides to this fight, rematches can be hard to get in this sport. You know, if someone wins, they don't necessarily want to grant a rematch. Mm -hmm. If you win this title, you're either going to fight Aljamain, rematch, or TJ, rematch. Is this one of the upsides to this fight? Yeah, yeah it would be beautiful for it to work out that way. Um, uh, I, I think that uh, it, it just sucks having those two L's on my record. You know, one, because the Sterling fight was just, like, shitty and embarrassing for me, you know? And then, uh, so I would definitely like to show that I'm definitely better than that guy, you know, and, and I had a night that just wasn't good. Um, and then same with TJ, where it's like I, I lost a decision that was, you know, this close. And uh, if I'm being honest, probably could have gone either way. I definitely walked out of that cage a lot less beat up than TJ did. So it makes you, you know, feel a little bit weird about that. But, uh, no, nah, man, I think it'd be beautiful if I get to avenge those two losses um, just right away after being the champ. And then I think that that will even speak more to uh, – to how good I am uh, in the sport also. Out of curiosity, I mean, all losses are probably shit, but do you view those two differently? Yeah, definitely, man. Like, uh, the Aljamain sh loss was way sh more shit. Um, the TJ one was a little bit easier of a pill to swallow just because I know that I beat him up and he didn't beat me up, you know? Uh, that makes it a little bit easier of a pill to swallow, but it still sucks losing. You still lose just as much sleep that night. I know you're, you're confident in your abilities, all fighters are, but TJ is considered by some to be the best bantamweight, right? So with the success you had against him, do you look at someone like Yan, who some people perceive to be easier? He's not like an easy fight, but easier. Do you take confidence from your performance against TJ into this one? Uh, I definitely gained a lot of confidence in that one, but to be honest, man, I don't go into two... Like, I, I go in definitely believing that I can win, but I don't really let confidence sway 
you know, how hard I train or how hard I'm going to fight or anything like that, man. Like, uh, I know that all of these guys are dangerous. We're all just men, including myself. And, uh, and I treat everyone like they can hurt me really bad. And, uh, so I would say that I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely confident that I had such a good performance against TJ and a lot of the stuff that I was working on in training was, uh, working against TJ as well. But, um, uh, I, I definitely am not over, you know, thinking and overly optimistic about how TJ's skills stack up to Jan's. Last thing for me, Al Jermaine's the champion, right? And some people look at that in a weird way. But do you think the UFC should have a time limit on when he needs to be ready to defend that belt? Yeah, man, I, I think that just the way that MMA is set up, it's every 10 pounds. There's not a lot of weight classes. I think that that's if we're talking too long, that's a lot of guys that are just sitting on the bench waiting to accomplish their dream while you're on the bench, you know, like that, that, that is just, yeah, I, I think that they should set like more clear cut rules on, on things like that. Corey, <clears throat> obviously Peter's fought here as well, but how much confidence do you take from, from, or how comfortable do you feel being here? And obviously you had such that, such a great win last October, do you know, how nice does it feel to be back? How comfortable? And do you kind of tap into those memories now that you're back here? Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, it, it definitely makes it feel a lot less weird, like staying up all night and sleeping all day. Um, uh, but yeah, man, uh, I, I had a really good time in Abu Dhabi last time. Um, and uh, yeah. I was going to ask as well, do you, do you visualize you know, getting your hand raised with the belt? You mentioned how much it would mean to you going home with that belt. Do you, do you look that far forward or, or is it purely just on, on your opponent come Saturday night? Uh, it's definitely on the outcome, but uh, I, I definitely don't spend too much time visualizing the outcome. I'm not one of those guys that thinks that if I sit here and think about, you know, stepping on a $100 bill, then I'll walk outside and step on a $100 bill. But uh, I, I definitely do my visualizations where I go through the fight in, in a lot of detail uh, things going wrong, things going right, and just what I want it to look like and the things that uh, me and my coaches have established as ways to beat Jan. Um, and, uh, and I definitely go over those, you know, for about at least an hour a day. And just lastly, I know you touched on it, just what would it mean to you to be taking that belt home to, to Colorado? Yeah, it mean a lot, man. Uh, I worked really hard for it, man. Like, I worked really, really hard for it. I didn't do a lot of partying, and it's like years and years of hard work, right? Like I didn't do a lot of partying in college because I was at practice, you know, I, I, uh, I didn't make a lot of friends, you know, in the last few years because I was always at practice. I, I don't have a lot of the same relationships I had with old friends because of, you know, me working my ass off every single day and um, me putting a lot of my energy or all of my energy into becoming a world champ. And I think that that's the only reason I'm sitting here is because I've been doing that for a really long time now. Best luck. Thanks. Corey. Over here. Mm. Uh, hi. Uh, what's on the line for you in this fight other than the interim belt? Uh, what's on the line? Uh, I definitely don't want to go home and lose a bunch of sleep over losing again because losing sucks. Um, that's always what's on the line, though, right? Like, uh, it's either winning or losing, right? Like, uh, a million things can happen in this sport. I just lost my last fight. Now I'm fighting for a, a world championship. So I don't really think too far of, like, is this good? Is this bad? Obviously, winning is better. But um, losing sucks, man. You know, like, that's what's always on the line for me is I hate losing. I hate losing all those nights of sleep. I hate uh, I hate everything about losing except for, you know, the learning process that usually comes like a month later or whatever. But, um, yeah, that's always on the line for me, man. I hate losing. So let's imagine um, if Jan would rematch this weekend with uh, Sterling. So who, who, who would win, in your opinion? Uh, I think Jan would definitely have won that fight against Sterling for the second time. Um. That's all I think. Okay.